the Severina Hotel. It has been quiet. There have been infected. We have not seen any humans yet. Which is somewhat just like... I don't know. That That's a little concerning to me. Although I don't know that I would have wanted to run into humans. Because every time we've run into humans, it hasn't really been great. Oh. My wife's calling me to tuck her into bed. This would be a good time for me to do that. Be right back, friends. Actually, here's what I'm going to do. Um, you see that? Infected just hopped that fence. Oh, means we can get in that way. Shouldn't we hear gunshots or something? Uh, I don't know what's going on. Sean, you can start the VOD here. Another wire. East one. We probably have to turn the generator on. Unless. Was this a bad idea? Should I have... This looks like it was a bad idea. Guess I probably should have gone in there, but whatever. Saw infected go in there. I'm gonna stay nice and quiet. I assume this is a real hotel in Seattle. Maybe not the same name, but the building itself, I gotta believe, is right. Right, yeah, our horse is just chilling behind the fence. That thing gets attacked by infected, it's done though. Wait, we've seen him take down moose. Oh, Jesus. Oh, shit. Oh, we got her in time. Oh, man. Uh, I'm not sure, Hellraiser. Oh my god, they're just like, they're eating. And attacking wild animals while they're eating is generally not a good idea. Alright, we gotta figure out how to get around these guys. Maybe I kill them with guns. I don't know, man. I don't want to waste. Oh, shit. I guess they're done eating. Oh, how lucky am I right now? How lucky am I right now? Oh my god. Alright, we gotta go in guns blazing here, I think. Although, going loud could potentially bring... Oh, man. All 
All right, we're good. That wasn't too bad. I wasted what? Three bullets? That's that. Could have been way worse. Get some more supplies. You know, I will also say, just kind of as a as a starting context for thinking about this, you embark on a journey like this of revenge. Every minute you are in this longer is going to contribute to cost sunk. So if this gets progressively more dangerous, Ellie and Dina are going to be at their at odds with themselves cognitively because it may be that at some point this is too dangerous and that they are way overwhelmed. And if that's the case, their own cost sunk fallacy might push them to keep going, even if it's their, in their best interest not to, just because they've sunk the time. It's a very powerful force. And I would hope that Ellie could maybe be cognizant of that and potentially protect herself and maybe bail if this does get crazy, because ultimately, like, does she want to die? Who knows? But it's intense. You got to be careful of that. We kind of saw that with Abby's group at the start, right? Owen saying this is a whole town too dangerous. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And you saw personal conviction override that. Absolutely. Here, right, what do we got here? Yikes. Ugh. This one's fresh. And he's got one of those wolf patches. Huh. Wolf. WLF. Guess they didn't make it out with their gas after all. That's good, right? Those fuckers who killed Joel got taken out by some random infected. Then they'd still be dead, right? I'm not sure that's justice. Ooh. Might as well grab what we can while we're here. That's mighty philosophical of you, Ellie. So now we get a little window into how Ellie's conceptualizing this. It's not enough for these people to be dead. Ellie has to be the one that controls that death. Ellie's gone full eye for an eye here. I watched Abby kill Joel. I will kill Abby. And anything less than not that is not good enough. It's an intense doctrine to take into this. And Dina tries to play the foil to that. Be like, hey, no, 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 no. Like, it just, it, they'd still be dead. Isn't that good enough? And he's like, nope. I want to be the one that watches her die. I want to be the one that controls that. That's me taking care of Joel's memory, not an infected. And you got to think that that's an important thing to Ellie, that she is the one that gets to, in a very abstract way, be the one that has control over that justice. She's the one that gets to take care of Joel by taking out who took care of him. Right, and then I suppose the idea that would happen there and where this gets really frustrating, right, is that then who's going to go after Ellie to kill them, right? Like, it never ends. But also, it begs the question of, like, where does it end? Because at some point, like, who is going to be the one that decides that killing the person who killed X person is not the way to go? It sounds great in theory, but being in Ellie's position makes that maybe a little bit more difficult. And we're in a context where there is no law. Like, this isn't, this isn't society as we know it. You can get away with this shit. And we have throughout the last two games. Hey, found their gas. Well, if you need any more, you know where to get it. It's true. They've been shot. You recognize them? 
No. Maybe someone else killed these guys. The infected just wandered in. Uh, Dina, I think that's a pretty logical conclusion, friend. And yeah, fuel seems like a very valuable resource. And I don't know that you're just leaving that hanging around in the open. Apparently cocaine's not valuable, though. That's in every drawer. That does... I do want to be a little more... Uh... Discipline about this. Because if there's folks here that have guns that are shooting folks, I don't want to be another one of those folks that's slumped against the wall like that. That doesn't sound like fun. I don't recognize this one either. Ellie's doing all this without even knowing why Abby had it out for Joel. For all we know, Abby could have had a pretty good damn reason for being pissed at him. Well, I think Ellie knows that there was probably justifiable reason. Which is evidenced by when she's talking to Dina when they're coming in. And she basically says, Joel was kind of a piece of shit. He crossed a lot of people. It would make sense why people would want him dead. I, I mean, she knows. She doesn't know the specific reason. But... I don't think I don't think people show up and brutally murder Joel like that without having quote unquote good reason. So then that begs the question, what reason would be good enough for Ellie to say, okay, never mind. What reason is good enough for her to change her internal object of Joel to a point where she can integrate that new explanation and expectation for Joel? into her internal psyche and representation of that. Probably none. And I would agree. I don't think Ellie cares at all. I, I don't think that's what this is about. This is about Ellie wanting to make good on taking care of Joel's memory. Know it all. A world famous researcher diagnosed with an early form of dementia. Wow, is that weird, given that that's what we were talking about before stream today. Sheila Kim reached out to Spark in desperation. Could they do something to slow her mental decline? They agreed to implant an experimental nano AI drive in her brain, allowing her to not only retain her knowledge, but accrue new information at a massive rate. Now she is arguably the smartest person alive and Spark's new chief technology officer, overseeing their military research arm. Some argue that she's lost her conscience. Others wonder whether the AI has taken over her mind. Jeez. What reasons would other have to follow Abby in killing Joel, though? We have no idea, right? Like, that's the tension here. We have no idea other than these people showed up and killed him, and that's we're working off of the same thing that Ellie's working off of. We just don't know, but ultimately, we don't care. Our emotional investment is in Joel. It's not in Abby. It's not in... I mean, we can be curious about where she's coming from, but right now, we're playing the role of Ellie. And if I'm Ellie, I don't give a shit. Rationality foregoes the emotion that's tied up in this. Saturday, March 29th, our strike against the Fedra checkpoint worked. Killed at least three of those thugs, just a few wounded on our side. In the wake of our losses, it felt good to hit back. That night, we voted Isaac as the new commander. It was a contentious meeting. His summary, ex execution, his summary execution of those prisoners still doesn't sit right with some people, but I like him. He can make the tough calls. Friday, April 4th. I'm fucking exhausted, but for good reason. We've had eight new recruits show up in the last few days, and six are Fedra deserters. 
Isaac's directive is clearly fucking working. It's either that or all those flyers. People are taking us seriously now. Finally seeing the Washington Liberation Front is a real alternative. We'll kick those fascists out and rebuild on the foundations Emma and Jason laid. So, you know what fascinates me about groups like this is you have to ask yourself the question, how are you going to do that? And if you dig real deep, there's a good chance that the answer is exactly the way that Fedra is doing it. You're going to have to ration resources. You're going to have to work with the exact same context and supply lines that they do. You're going to create the exact same thing, which then brings us to really what this is about is control. I am having a force exerted upon me that I perceive as being a limitation to me. And I've grown up in the free world, so I can't stand that. I'd rather be the oppressor than the oppressed. But I'm going to use the same exact mechanisms. Like, that's exactly what's going to happen, right? Like, you think you're going to do a better job, but are you? Yeah, there you go, Chico. And you just, the jinx. Right, I like how the WLF sabotaged supplies then went, look at Federer. Right, so now all of a sudden we're fighting an ideological war instead of actually trying to solve the problem. Did we have letters in The Last of Us 1? We sure did. All right. Um, that's fully checked out. Ooh. Tommy did this. This? No way. That was definitely him. It was one of the ones that killed Joel. Shit. There's another one over here. Was using them against each other. How? Joel told me about this. You ask this guy a question, but you don't make him say it, you make him write it down. And then you ask this guy, and if the facts match, you're telling the truth. If not, you fuck him up. Ellie's reaction here is really interesting. You see like that like the hesitation and like the thoughtfulness in her face. My read on that is that Ellie sees this brutality, connects it with Joel. We saw him do this. And then has probably some very deep down realization. Yeah, maybe Joel. Maybe Joel did earn that death. And the hesitation and the struggle we see in her is the cognitive dissonance of that. This is a person that I love and care about. 
And this is a person who did some pretty awful shit and taught that awful shit. Not just to Tommy, but to me. He talked about this with a teenager. And so Ellie's got to square those two things up. And that's an immensely hard thing to square up because one of those things, the first one, this is a person I love and care about, fuels the desire to go find these people. The second one is an argument against it. Any rationale toward why a person would want to kill Joel is not going to sit well with Ellie because it plays as a counter to her internal sense of Joel. And humans hate that dissonance. And so she experiences what's called aversive arousal there. And she's presented with a decision. Do I assimilate this information? Do I try to square this up? Do I, do I jam my experience into a pre-existing expectation? Or do I change my expectation within the, within the for, through accommodation? And if she accommodates and she changes her expectation and she expands her representation of Joel too far, it's going to make it harder and harder for her to stay put on this mission. And then she is with at odds with the cost sunk. So now all of a sudden we have information that suggests, okay, maybe this makes sense why Joel was gone after, but I'm already in this. I went all the way from Jackson, Wyoming to Seattle, Washington. I can't just turn around and go back. Ooh, you can just feel it. It's so intense. And all of that is shown in Ellie's nonverbal language when she turns around there. And yeah, perhaps it is interesting to see these people dead because Ellie has probably fantasized about being the one that did this. She might be frustrated that Tommy's the one that's doing this. That very well could be the case. And I think that's probably how she's going to conceptualize it if she assimilates. I always wondered if one of the reasons Joel suppressed the idea of Sarah so much was knowing she would have resented the things he do. Perhaps. We can get out this way. Maybe catch up with Tommy. Keep this is on. brutal, man. Look at this. Maps all bloody. He tortured the shit out of him. So it begs the question, when you become an adult like this, like Ellie, it begs the question. Are these people that are worth me caring about? I mean, yes, they've been good to me, but Jesus Christ. It's intense, man. It's a lot to sit with. A lot to sit with. Hecky, thank you for the two months. I appreciate that sub. Uh, potentially Scog, yes. But that's how we come through with our justifications for things like that, right? I was being protected by that person. You have to, we create our cognitive boxes for that stuff. It's how we help ourselves sleep at night. Our brain does everything it can to mitigate dissonance. It is an intense experience for the brain to have and it hates it. We will tell ourselves stories in order to try to make the experiences we have fit into our worldview. I know you said Tommy had a rough past, but fuck. I know. Are you okay? It wasn't pretty. I don't want you to think bad of Tommy. Ellie. If I had my sister's killers tied to a chair, I'd do worse. I hear you. Ellie saying I don't want you to think bad of Tommy, I think is a projection. I think Ellie is having a hard time considering what it is that Tommy just did and that she just bared witness to, and by extension, what Joel has done. And I think she's projecting that onto Dina. Basically saying I don't want you to think bad about Tommy because there's a part of me that does now. And Dina serves as kind of a pushback on that and says, hey, I'd do the exact same thing, which would I would be curious to know how Ellie's affected by hearing Dina say that, because now Ellie's surrounded by people who are basically justifying something that she's experiencing dissonance around. Which brings us to another form of inconsistency compensation called affirmation, which is where we look to other people to either help us crystallize our expectations or our experience. 
and Dina is serving to crystallize our experience. But we experience Dina as reassuring in this moment because we are emotionally invested in Joel. <laughs> right? We look at that and we go, oh, God, that's so sweet of her. And what I love as a psychologist of what's been crafted here is we have to navigate tension. And I love it. And I honestly think that's part of why people don't like this game because they don't like navigating the cognitive dissonance that it stirs up in you. That's okay. But it's fascinating stuff, man. Got it. And I got this. Big question though. Where does this take us? We like the idea that Joel and Ellie are good people that lived happily ever after. We don't like the idea that this is what would happen, but this is the world that they live in. We set up camp. Maybe somewhere high up so we can scope out the area. I like that idea. Okay. Let's look for an open building. Preferably with no infected. Or WLF. Wolves. Whatever. I still have some of those almond things left if you're hungry. Uh, not really. You should eat something. Oh my god. What? I sounded like my mom just now. <laughs> I'll be fine. Ah, uh, which is maybe what attracts Ellie to Dina right now. Is she needs a she needs a parental figure here. Dina needs somebody to take care of. Ellie needs somebody to take care of her. Symbiosis, baby. And we like Dina because we, the game, the person playing the game or the people playing the game and watching it, we want to be taken care of too. Which is why Dina is so lovely to have around right now. We like reassurance from the people we care about when things are stressful. <laughs> Fuck! Holy shit! Get the other! Don't lose her! Go! Didn't think I'd ever see you again. How'd you find us? I asked about a dude with a bitch scar across his face. Mm. It's fine. How many came with you? Hmm? Just you two? You can't stop this. Jordan! Supposed to be out looking for the other one. The fuck is this? You know the smuggler that we killed out in Jackson? Yeah. This girl was there. What? They're coming after us. That's why Nick was fucked up like that. We gotta get her to Isaac. We gotta tell him exactly what's going on. Yeah, well, I just got off the radio with Isaac. And we got a new mandate. Kill all trespassers. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. That doesn't make any sense. It's direct order, man. No, let's talk to her. Let's figure out what she I, knows. I don't give a fuck what she knows. You saw what she did to the others? You have no idea how many people she might be with. This might be an ambush, I don't care Mike. how many people she's with. We will find them and we will kill them. Can you just think for yourself for a quick Jordan, second the right fuck now? Out of my Yeah. <laughs> 
go. Somebody would have heard the gunshots. Look, she's one of them. Come on, look at that later. Was there a TV station on that map? I don't fucking know. Come on. Fuck, Ellie. Oh boy. Okie dokie. Shot Dina. Had a girl. Holy okay. shit. How many guys did you see? Enough. We gotta get the hell out of here. Yeah, we do. Let me grab some let me grab some ammo and shit real quick. Let's go super fast. God, where the hell even are we? There'd be nothing more jarring than waking up after you've been knocked out. Man, that was intense. I don't know, Sky. It was this way. Move up. Clear the rooms. All right, let's go, dickwads. Bring it. Get around now. This is all survival right now. I don't give a shit what these people's motivation is. Over here. Oh my God. Tina? What are you... Okay. Oh, boy. God damn it! Clear? Yeah. You recognize any of these guys? No. All right, right now I don't feel bad about any of this because it's self-defense. Holy crap. My friend found you through TikTok and ever since show she showed me to watch your Mass Effect videos on YouTube. Love the content. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate all of you being here. I'm glad we've made it through this together. Those of you that watch me live on Twitch, I appreciate you immensely. Those of you that watch my VODs on YouTube, thank you for watching me. Share my stuff if you like what I do. More people knowing about it means more cool people get to hang out and have cool discussions with us. Also, if you leave me comments, I, I try to make a point to respond to them. So. Alright, this is intense. So now, all of a sudden, shit's real, man. Now we know... I mean, luckily, I don't think they were able to necessarily communicate with somebody that we're here. But they know something's up. It's, this suggests to me that there's a good chance these people saw Tommy somehow. Maybe they even have him. That or it was just a routine trap, but... Okay. Shots come from. Nice and easy here. Search the courtyard. You the cafeteria. I'll cover here. Right. All right. Let's see if we can maybe do this quiet. I don't know that going loud here is the best idea. If we can help it anyway.
I just don't want to waste bullets, especially now that... Oh, shit. I don't want to grab her because that person in there sees me. Go, 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 go. Down, down, down. Keep her in the grass. Good. People are super dangerous. I mean, these people... I mean... Okay, so let's think about this for a second. That guy referred to Joel as the smuggler that they got. So it doesn't seem that that guy had any kind of personal vendetta toward Joel because he referred to him as the smuggler. He didn't say, like, that guy, you know, that's that lady was with Joel Miller. Like, Abby literally called him Joel Miller when she ran into him. So it makes me wonder how distant these guys are from what it is that happened. You know, what are these guys' motivation and convictions? I, I think it would maybe be easier for us to understand if we knew that they cared about Joel, but, like, they don't really give any indication. Oh, God, don't turn around. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. I mean, I don't like that we got to kill these people, but... Up there. More of them. I don't know. Spread out. Oh, my God. That's a lot of folks. But couldn't we just talk? Couldn't we just be like, hey... I mean, I guess if that Scar... So it makes me wonder, if that Scar guy hadn't recognized us, how would this be different? But again, their motivations don't matter. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, these guys are trying to kill us. And it's Gavin. What? We're under attack. All right, Dina, stay back here. This way, at least we can see them come at us from wherever they're going to come at us from. Roger that. Ten bullets. Oh my god, Dina, you gotta be careful. We clear? Fuck, there's a lot of them. I told you. Dina did almost get domed there. That was really, really close. At the same time, these guys have guns, so at least we can grab the bullets off of these guys' guns. We're actually going to come out of, out of here with a net positive, I think. So every single one of these people could be a Joel to somebody else. Think about that. Right? Like, we've just killed a shitload of people, and every single one of them could be as important to somebody else as Joel is to us. I mean, it makes the gravity of this all the more, like, powerful, I think, to some extent. It's like, we're going through this with reckless abandon, but I think if we were to stop and actually think about it that way again, it might... It might stop Ellie from maybe following through with this if she feels so inclined. You killed Chris and Gavin, and they have names. That is true. Are we good, Dina? Have a look here. Fuck these walls. Steal their shit. Well, I mean. What do we got? Oh shit. Over there. Ellie, get down. Hello? Oh shit. Where's Adrian? Oh. Move over, Dina. Fuck. Hey, you two. Trespassers gone. What? You seen anything? No. Cover this roof. 
I'll check over here. You sure she's not uh, on the street? Did you look? How would she get down there? I don't know. Have you been called in? Greg went out to Capitol Hill. He should be back with those guys any minute. Oh man, I don't know if we can go. Pro I don't know if we can go fast enough here. Go, Ellie, go. down there there's no one here this doesn't feel right dina dina get under <laughs> dina what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> dina's just running around all right let's go like at least, at least like, put a box over you like Solid Snake or something, Dina. What are you doing? Oh my God. Okay, maybe we can get out of here without raising the attention of these folks. I don't really know what the way out is though. So this is a little bit tricky. We go over this edge. You know, get the hell out of my way. We good. Let's go. Let's go. Close the door behind you, Dina. Or don't. We'll read Isaac's note a little bit here. I want to get through this. Hurry. Let's try it. Jesus. Inside. Dogs? Come on. We gotta get away from this school. Now. There has to be a way down to the street somewhere. Dude, dogs is intense. Leah's note. Jordan, Isaac's got us posted up on a two-week at the TV station. Scars, scavs spotted in the area. Here's something to hold you over. Leah. Oh. Okay. Leah's photograph. Isaac's mandate. From here on out, kill all trespassers. We'll send additional units to locate the other woman. Return to the return to the FOB by EOD. Bring all available supplies. Boy, this is intense if there are dogs. Dogs are scary as shit in situations like this, man. Uh, how do we get out of here? Are we going to have to make this jump? I got it. Come on. We're good on supplies. I probably should craft some med kits and stuff. Seems like it would be a good idea. Oh, I can't make a fourth. 
I got enough. Oh, I got a shitload of pills. Holy crap. Let's go ahead and do this. Craft melee upgrades. Craft improved health kits. More smoke bombs. Listen mode. Speed movement. Endure. Otherwise lethal damage will instead leave you at low health, giving you an opportunity to escape. That seems useful. Uh, Maltov? Let's go ahead and make one. Let's go ahead and make two, in fact. Another card. What do we got? Cardio trading card. Pedro Rojas was a long-distance runner who dreamed of winning, but always came up short. When Spark offered him limitless stamina in exchange for using him as a test subject in their new Velocitanium artificial hearts, he immediately accepted the deal and then escaped going into hiding. Now known as Cardio, he can run faster and farther than anyone alive. Pursued by Spark, they still want him back to finish their experiments. They'll just have to catch him first. Cool. Certificate in Business Informatics. Brian Scott. Look at that. I was waiting for you to die from that jump like you did last night. No, no, no. I learned my lesson. Alright, we got to be real careful here, I think. This is scary because we're in unknown territory, and after getting, we need to get to the street. So one of the nice things, as much as I hate that we ran over that mine and the horse died and we got caught, I actually think that's a good thing from Ellie and Dina's survival standpoint because now they've had their expectations realigned to be more realistic. Like you can get ambushed here. You've got to be on alert. We were getting a little bit too eased in here. Like, oh, Seattle doesn't seem so bad. But yeah, we're all in now, baby. All right, coast looks clear. Yeah. I think we're good. All right. Check this out. She's one of them. Mm. Well, fuck her then. Read the letter. Jordan. Isaac's got us posted up on a two-week at the TV station. Scars spotted in the area. Here's something to hold you over, Leah. TV station. You think she's still there? We gotta find out, right? So, spy all these tall buildings. That way. Okay. Let's go get Leah. Got a paper trail to Abby, apparently. You were very lucky to survive that encounter. Oh, Jesus. I missed the mattress there. That was, or the hot tub there. Nice hot tub. You good? Yeah. Thought I was fucked back there. Uh, thanks for the save, by the way. Of course. Ellie making sure not to repeat patterns so, from Joel. The wolves. They're really armed. Yeah, they are. Huh? Do you think there were going to be this many of them? 
Tommy said this was a possibility. Does that change anything for you? No. Does it change anything for you? Keep an eye out for patrols. There were a bunch trying to smoke me out around here. How many? I passed two, but I got a feeling there were more. And once they realize we're out of the school and that we killed their fucking friends, they'll be out in force looking for us. Oh, we finished each other's sentences now. And yes, I did, King. I can't believe they just attacked like that. These people are not like us. What if we'd been refugees? What if we, I don't know, had intel they needed? It doesn't seem like they care about that. I'd say they're arguably a lot like us. Uh, but we have to separate them. You have to cognitively separate them and create an us versus them mentality if you're going to do what Ellie's trying to do. If Ellie sees that herself in these people, she then sees herself in the people who killed Joel. And that's way too emotionally intense for her. Way too emotionally intense for her. There's no way. Any amount of empathy that she might have for the people that killed Joel is going to be quite literally the ultimate form of cognitive dissonance. So Ellie is going to tell herself all sorts of stories about how these people are different from her because she would never do what she did to Joel. Even though we know that, yeah, she's kind of a lot like Joel and a lot like these people. More tension, more dissonance. People do this all the time. The us versus them mentality, you see it in sports constantly, right? But you see it, you see it in sports, you see it in politics, you see it everywhere. People are constantly trying to objectify other because finding empathy for people that you perceive as being diametrically opposed to you creates more dissonance. And our avoidance of that is very real. I wonder if there's anything left in these buildings. There's always something left behind. Hey, that's the name of the DLC we played. You weren't there for it, Dina. Sorry. I'll tell you about it later. When we're less in trouble. I'm curious what kind of person could acknowledge they aren't terribly different and embrace the cognitive dissonance, but that's just kind of Joel in the end. It's not a type of person that can do that, Gref. All of us can do that. All of us can understand when cognitive dissonance is happening and then decide what we're going to do with it. Make more of an objectively good decision based on what our values are. It's not a type of person that's able to do that. It's just a person who commits to, I want to make sure that I'm doing right by myself and others as much as I can, and acknowledging that cognitive dissonance is part of that process. All of us can do that. And why I like to point it out, and why I'm pointing it out as much as I am while we're playing this game, is because this is all of us. We all experience dissonance, and then it's our decision of what we want to do with that. Ellie is making a decision to other that group and to basically fall into the cost sunk here. Her acknowledging that this is maybe not the best endeavor would be to acknowledge that Joel is not worth fighting for post-mortem. That maybe Joel possibly deserved what happened to him, or at the very least, it's understandable why it happened to him. And I don't know that that's the kind of cognitive structure of Joel that Ellie wants to orient herself around for the rest of her life. So for as long as she others these people and sees them as absolute brutal monsters, she gets to preserve her idealized version of Joel that we know is not in line with the reality of, hold, of who Joel is. We all do this. We all do this. Quick recap. What happened to Joel? He was killed by Abby last stream. Make it their fault rather than Joel's. Yeah, exactly. Because to make it Joel's fault. I mean, it's not. Ultimately, it's not Joel's fault either. These people chose to chase after Joel and kill him. 
And that's the thing is like, we look at this cycle of violence that's happening here as if it's an inevitable thing that we don't have control over and that it's just going to happen. Every single person here is making a decision. These people are making decisions to go after me. I'm making decisions to go after them. Every single one of us is responsible for that decision. So even though Joel did a whole bunch of bad stuff, does that justify these people chasing after him and killing him? Not necessarily. They still made the decision to do that. Ellie still made the decision to go to Seattle. Tommy still made the decision to go to Seattle. All of us are accountable for the decisions we're making as a result of this. Got him? Yeah. Shit. Oh, my heart's racing. Same. Been there before. I think we're pretty good on supplies here, but... If we can get some pills, that would be ideal. There we go. These stairs don't creak. Apparently not. And you'd, you'd think there'd be... Well, I guess there is a lot of mold here. You'd think in a place like Seattle, there'd be a shitload of mold. And all these houses. Like, I'd be wearing my gas mask constantly. Capital in. Oh, God. Do we dare go in this nasty-ass pool for the loot? Is it worth it for the loot? Come on. Please tell me there's something in here. Nope, just a dirty pool. Okie dokie. Now I got wet jeans and shoes. Ugh. At what point in life were you when you played these games for the first time? When I played The Last of Us 1... Something keeps bugging me. Hold Why on. didn't they kill you and Tommy when they had the chance? I don't know. It seems reckless. Maybe they're dumb. Maybe. What's going on, Dina? What? Could be that you just weren't who they were looking for. So they let you go. Yeah, well, they did beat the shit out of us. The one guy, Jordan, kicked my face in. Yeah, but why do you think that they didn't... Finish the it doesn't matter. They fucked up. They did. Oh, what a... What a... Interesting conversation. You're seeing the split happen right there. Dina suggesting that they didn't kill us would suggest that they're merciful. That they did what they were out to do. And that these people actually have some humanity in them and were willing to spare us. Ellie has to polarize against that if she's going to stay committed to this. Ellie can't, can't entertain that thought. Ellie entertains that thought. It throws this whole thing off. Creates more dissonance. She ain't interested in this. So we see her fight against that, right? Doesn't matter. Well, arguably it might. But it makes them, like, 
not tragic figures, but it makes them figures that are worthy of empathy. And empathy is 100% going to make it harder to kill them. If Ellie looks at a person with her knife in her hand and she sees this person as somebody who's potentially merciful, makes it a lot harder for her to dig the knife in. If she can objectify him and look at him as merciless wolves, right, or beasts, or people with absolutely no regard for human life, makes it way easier for her to kill them because they're objects, they're not people. Dina is very obviously struggling with this a little bit because she's feeling a sense of, I don't know if it's gratefulness for the fact that they were spared, but it's going to make it harder for her to do what they got to do. And Ellie is so deeply committed here and is just, I'm getting Joel, I'm getting Abby, and I don't care who else gets in my way that she's having a hard time dealing with that, and so she splits against it and fights it. Now, Ellie's got to be careful not to see Dina as diametrically opposed What's to her. The, name of the girl in the note? The one in the TV station? Leah. Was she the one... Uh, was she the one with the braid? No. Only thing I remember about her was the sound of her crying over that sadistic fuck's face when I sliced him open. Ooh. Okay, Ellie. So, how do you want to handle her? Leah, I mean. Find out what she knows. Find out where the others are. Go from there. You gonna ask her why they did it? Yeah. Oh. You hear that little hesitation? I don't know if Ellie actually wants to ask them why they did it. I don't think Ellie could can handle the reason why they did hey, it. Check this out. We don't know what that reason is, but any reason subjects us to empathy. And Ellie, I mean, Ellie would maybe do well to listen to it, but if Ellie is this far in and hears them out, why? Right? In the same way that Abby didn't ask why Joel did whatever he did. She didn't care. Right? If they listen to each other, if they pay attention, it certainly mitigates the violence. But then what happens is Ellie has to sit with the discomfort of the fact that she didn't avenge Joel's death in the way that she has conceptualized as the appropriate way to do it in this world that they live in. So asking for that opinion, asking for that reasoning of why they did it i don't really know how that does ellie a favor and i think she kind of knows that which is why she hesitated when she said that to dina i don't know i mean i don't know why abby didn't kill them i don't know why they were left it seemed to me like they were there for joel and they killed joel and got out they didn't waste time Ellie ain't going to have any time for that, but we can. Rules must be followed. All WLF soldier instructions must be followed. Fedra collaborations will be executed. Permission required for leaving the assigned zone. Curfew will stay in effect until further notice. How old do you think this is? At least a few years. They probably put it up right after everything went down with the military. It must have been scary for all these people. You think? First the outbreak, then Fedra... Then the wolves. I wonder how many stuck around and joined these WLF fuckers. Good question. Yeah, I mean, the WLF sounds worse than Fedra. To me, anyway. Rockefeller. Ooh, I like that name. Real estate and construction magnet. Norman Stryker's crowning achievement was the Spark headquarters, both the part visible to the world and the massive subterranean laboratory complex. But when he walked in on a secret experiment, Laurent Foucault tried to dispose of him in a quarry explosion. When the Society of Champions couldn't pull Stryker out of the rocks, Dr. Stem made the rocks a part of Stryker. Now covered head to toe in rock armor, Rockefeller aims to tear the Spark headquarters down brick by brick 
and he knows the place better than anyone. Not very much of a liberation front, huh? No, I wouldn't say they are. <laughs> I wouldn't say they are at all. Alright, we got some pills. That's good. Look at all these assets, man. I just admire so much what Naughty Dog created here. Like... Somebody had to go in and just meticulously make these boxes and place them and make them look disheveled. I point this out almost every stream, but my God, you want to talk about the epitome of making sure the thing you've created is fully realized. This is it, man. Absolutely incredible stuff. It is just such a lived in and well-realized world. Upstairs here. Thank you, chat. Anything up here we're able to even go into? Doesn't look like it. We jump down here, huh? I can still kind of see the buildings. How do you want to go? Uh, let's see. Got it. Oh shit. Wolves. Shit. Yeah? Stop talking about Cinco. Yeah. So there's a couple thoughts I have about these WLF soldiers as we kind of try to figure out where they are. First and foremost, consider the fact that these guys do our job so we can go back and eat. Okay. Oh God. No way we're finding her before scars are infected here. Good. And find the body and let's bring her back. Oh God. 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 This just got really sucky. Yo, you're out there. All right, Anakin, I have the high ground. Uh, Neuro, I have no idea. I've never been in a modern military academy. I would certainly hope so. Um, okay, so what I was going to say about these guys. So, what we're learning a little bit about the WLF is they kind of took over for Fedra. And they did it forcefully. And it seems that there are probably some people who joined the WLF because they are ideo ideologically aligned with them. Maybe they were shorted by 
Fedra or whatever, but there are probably other people who joined this group because they were afraid that if they didn't, they were screwed. Which means that some of these people that we are fighting against probably don't want to be here or maybe don't care about any of this stuff. They literally only joined the group because they had to out of survival. Which means that us ruthlessly killing them is not particularly great. Not that I want to kill the ideological people either, but like, I mean, some of these folks are literally just trying to survive like we are. It could be a larger group than we expect, but it's also like a bunch of people that maybe aren't as bloodthirsty as we think, and we're projecting our bloodthirstiness onto them based on what we saw represented with Abby. But Abby could be an outlier with this group, rather than being the group itself. We have no way of being able to make that differentiation, though. We haven't been in Seattle, so... We're operating off of our own con conviction because that's less ambiguous. And that's another thing we do all the time as humans. We operate off our own convictions because at least they're consistent and we understand them. They're not ambiguous to us. What choice are they giving us, though? Everybody's in a shoot-first mindset. It's true. So they got wrapped up in a pure survival situation where the tribe is what is familiar and safe. Exactly. These people, have they know who each other are. They don't know who we are. We're an unknown variable. And if you want to survive, you take out unknown variables. Unknown variables equal risk. Absolutely. I don't know. Wait, right, we need to go that way. Like, I wish I could just incapacitate these guys instead of kill them. Right, 20 years of chronic stress. A lot of these people appear to be young, so most of their lives, this is all they've known. And that's the other thing, right? Like I say this every stream, you have to put yourself in the context of the game. We can't use modern day sensibilities when we play this. We have to think about the context that these people exist in. This world is brutal, it's heartless, it's cold. It's filled with a lot of things that are scary. Ellie doesn't care. Again, we... Uh, something that I see people do a lot with this game... Any left? I don't think so. Something I see people do a lot with this game is they struggle with the fact that Ellie is killing as many people as, they, as she is right now. And for Ellie, killing all these people makes complete sense to her. None. Dina keeps asking us. Man, this QZ is huge, right? Dina keeps asking us if we recognize anybody after we do this. And I find that to be interesting. If I was going to take a guess at why it is that she's doing that, my guess is that Dina's not really thrilled about what's happening here. Dina's only in this because of Ellie. Dina, Dina's not connected to Joel in this way. Dina probably doesn't like all the senseless murder that we're engaging in, but Dina is so connected to Ellie and cares so much about Ellie that she's willing to go along for the ride. My guess is that she's asking if Ellie recognizes anybody because she wants this to end as soon as possible. And if Ellie recognizes some of these folks, maybe they get closer to Abby. I think every person we murder senselessly along the line is going to have an adverse effect on Dina because this isn't her fight. This is her fight by proxy. I mean, she's asked that every time we kill people. Every time. Which tells me that pattern tells me something. It gives me a little bit of insight into where her mind's at with this stuff. It's pretty massive. You think the wolves are spread out all over it? I sure hope not.
I think she's trying to gauge how brutal Ellie is willing to be. Even if Dina prepared herself for Ellie taking out a lot of people, it's totally different experiencing. It's a great point, right? Like, what are the chances that seeing Ellie be this ruthless all of a sudden makes Ellie more unattractive to Dina? What if that's something that Dina can't wrap her head around? And now all of a sudden Dina says, Jesus, I've been in this far too long. And I don't really like who you're becoming. But I'm in on this. I, I, I'm, I'm cost sunk. I told you I'm in this till the end. I feel a sense of emotional obligation to you. But what you're doing doesn't compute with what I'm attracted to. I like sweet and kind Ellie that smokes weed with me in the bottom of a cellar of a guy that I knew a long time ago from the Fireflies. I mean, there's a lot of complex shit happen happening here relationally. I don't know that that's the case for Dina, but we could certainly hypothesize that there's a chance. But it also shows where the prioritization is for Ellie. She She's, she's still hyper-focused on Joel. Dina is a accessory to this. She's helpful. But I think if push came to shove, Ellie's taken her conviction with Joel over her connection with Dina. But neither one of them, even if they do become unattractive to each other in this, Dina becoming unattractive to Ellie because Dina's sympathizing with the people that she's trying to kill, and Ellie becoming unattractive because she's ruthlessly murdering people, ultimately doesn't really matter because they have to survive together. So now circumstance holds them together, even if they're ideologically not together, which is what we also see with the WLF. It's what we were just talking about. All of a sudden, circumstance bonds these people into a group instead of ideology. It might have started with ideology, but now in operation, it's about survival. It's Halloween stuff. Some of this stuff is funny looking. I'm not a fan. I wonder why you're not a fan, Ellie. Maybe because Riley died when after you went through a Halloween store. I would imagine this probably stirs up some, some shit for Ellie. It's kind of a nice little touch to have us walk in there and have Ellie say that. God damn, look how pretty this is. Holy shit. Okie dokie. Ooh, all right, let's get some uh let's get some gears here so that maybe we can mod some weapons. That would be ideal. I would enjoy that. I think another thing that I'll say as we scavenge this up here is, and this is speaking to the context of the world that we're in, there's not a lot to get excited about in this world. I mean, look at this. Seattle is destroyed. There's not really a lot going on. It's not like we can go watch a movie. It's not like we can get excited about the next sports event we're going to. So in times like this, Holding on to some sort of vendetta is all you got. So in some ways, Ellie clinging on to this is because there's not really anything else to do. There's not really another, like, life to live. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to sit in Jackson and just rough it? So I think that's another piece of context here. It makes it a lot easier for us to hold on to this. It gives us something to live for, even if it might be brutal. Oh boy. Am I right? <laughs> I think it's possible that Ellie feels like she can't move on with her life until Abby's dead. Oh, I, do. I think it's certainly possible that as long as as long as Abby's alive, Ellie is constantly gonna think about her, have intrusive thoughts about her. I think if you were gonna do quote unquote work with Ellie on this, if she was to leave Abby alive and go on and live her life, 
we would have to help her come around to the idea that despite the fact that Ellie doesn't agree with her actions, there's a good chance that Abby doing that was justified for Abby and that Ellie has to come to some form of acceptance around that. And I don't know that Ellie would be down for that. Hard to say. It's just hard to create a cognitive reality where Ellie is not doing this. I think the only way that she would not do this would be like if Joel swooped down as a ghost and basically said to her, Ellie, don't do this. This isn't how I want you to take care of me in memory. I think that's about the only person who could talk her out of this, which makes it all the more tragic. I mean, these guys definitely aren't great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a... Get down. Ooh, this is a... This is a gas station pump. Infected in here? Oh, Jesus. Pretty sure everybody alive now is a pretty terrible person by our standards. I think that's fair. I think that's fair to say because, but these people at this time maybe aren't. that I want to fight any of these. Last round, the survival magazine, the camouflage issue. Protect, deceive, and hide with the best. Our 15 tips from renowned experts to show you how. Also inside, 12 duct tape brands compared. Nice. Rainwater collection techniques. Badass. New upgrade branch, stealth. like that craft silencers seems useful fram it's happening early sunday morning keep you people off the streets, but careful what you say. If Isaac finds out I talked, I'm fucked. Whole thing should be quick. Not a lot of Fedra left in you neighbor in your neighborhood. As we clear neighborhoods, we're moving everyone to the base. People shouldn't freak. It's temporary. Helps us keep track of the good guys versus the bad guys. Can't wait to sleep in the same bed with you again. No more sneaking notes and all that stupid in that stupid studio, Rebecca. I really don't know if I want to go in here, but I also kind of do. Over there. Over there. Yeah, I know, Dina. See, I don't feel bad about killing these folks. This I don't mind. Dina? <laughs> I 
at least fortitude when touching these things is honestly really impressive. Yeah, I agree. Make sure all our bases are covered here. I think we're okay. Tina, get out of my way, please. Thank you. Good shit. Dina! If Ellie had access to a large daisy cutter bomb that could destroy a large part of the city and the enemy but cause major casualties, would she use such a bomb? You'd have to ask her. I don't know. I mean, potentially, depending on how strong her conviction on avenging Joel is. I mean, because you have to look at it as anybody that's casualty of that is somebody she doesn't know personally. She's had one person in her life, aside from Dina now, be there for her unconditionally. That didn't pawn her off on anybody else, and that was that was Joel. And that's going to matter to her more than people that she has absolutely no emotional connection to. And the reality is, that's how most of us operate. As much as we like to think that that's not the case. Man, this area is huge. Over there. Heads up. Oh, God. All right, we're not going to go that way. Dina! I want to get to the news station. That's what I want. nobody in here oh Gavin we're under attack maybe we're okay because I hit them both with silencers maybe a lot of dudes named Gavin Dina, holy fucking shit, get out of my way. Thank you. Oh boy. Oh boy. Behind us. Watch out. What do we got, guys? Talk to me, anyone. What do we got? Area is clear. many dudes we have in here. Dina. Sorry. They really caught me off guard. It's okay. It's not okay. Don't scream like that.
All right, we cool? Okay. I got to the other side of the checkpoint. Now what? Hey, Dina. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, that would be so heavy. I can barely handle putting one of those five gallon water jugs on my arm, let alone having Dina step hand? on it like that. Hey, that round building. It looks like the TV station from your map. Yeah. Come on. I don't know how I would have done all this without you. Look at you. Shut up. I never would have let you do this by yourself. I'm glad I'm here too. Cool. I'm glad that's been established. Holy shit. <laughs> what the fuck was that? It ran into a trap. A what? Explosive traps. Watch where you're walking. Oh, cool. Okay. Good thing we've seen this before. Good old Uncle Bill taught us well. Let's hope that didn't alert the 50 people that we walked past. I mean, it's uncanny, Dina's ability to be in the way. A hey, dipshit. Come on over. Come on over. Come on! worked you proud of me chad i used a brick you like that oof where are you going hey hold on a second I want to see if there's anything cool up here. Area's pretty cut up. Still no scars. Four more hours on this shift. Fuck. Well. That's 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 fun. Let's go ahead and shine a light on this. What do you think, chat? All right, chat, where are you on this piece of paper? Don't answer that. Any wolves? I didn't see any, but it's hard to tell. I did get a cool piece of paper with dicks on it, though. I think we got to get down this. Oh, boy. And down this we shall go, Dina. Oh, shit, Ellie! Fuck. I'm okay. Come on. I like Ellie's art a lot more, right? Speaking of Ellie's art, let's open our journal. Anything new? Doesn't seem so. We never did upgrade our guns at that garage. Because those assholes showed up. Look at me talking like Ellie here. Is Leah chick? 
What if she's gone by the time we get there? I don't want to think about that right now. Dina, I love you. Your installation of doubt is not welcome. Might be a good way to deal with the hordes. Yeah, that'd be smart. We'd probably blow up some stragglers. We'd put up signs, warning them. What if they can't read? We'll make drawings. You know, like a foot tripping over a wire and then big fire. I bet I could build them. <laughs> I like you. I want it in writing. The idea that... I met this guy once, friend of Joel's. Tripwire to whole town. How'd people get around? It was just him. Wait, he lived alone in an entire town? He had trust issues. That's sad. Kept him alive. It's not like you have to choose between being alive and being close to people. It's not black and white. You take a risk, though, right? You take a bigger risk being alone. Like, what if he got hurt? What if he got sick? What happens if someone else gets hurt or sick? And you have this added, you know, burden that puts you in a worse position. Yeah, I guess that's also true. <laughs> Dina! Dina, you didn't watch Dr. Make Live live on Twitch when we played through your life or the life of the person you like. Okay, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, that interaction shows that Ellie has deeply internalized what she has learned from everybody she's come across up until this point. Which is that if you get close to people, you don't survive and you get hurt. And that has rang true for everyone except for Tommy and Maria and now Dina. Joel being the ultimate version of that. And Ellie's reflection on that is basically along the lines of, yep, everything everybody ever said to me about that is completely true because if it wasn't true, I wouldn't be in Seattle right now. I'm in Seattle because connection puts me at risk. Dina is being a little bit idealistic. I think Dina's easy for us to empathize with because we like the idea of a gray area in our cushy 2021. Not in this world, man. Ellie's got a little bit more of a realistic worldview on this one than Dina does. And Dina's disappointed in that in the same way that I bet Ellie is wants to believe what Dina's saying. But Ellie does not have the experience, the experience to confirm Dina's idealistic view of the world. We're literally at risk right now, going through hordes of WLF because of the connection we feel to Joel. That connection, by the way, being stronger than Dina, and I think Dina can feel that. Because if our connection was stronger to Dina, we would have stayed home with Dina. So Dina is constantly at odds with Joel here, vying for Ellie's emotional connection. And Ellie is so far in Camp Joel that she's willing to put Dina at risk. That's a whole other point. Dina's all in on Ellie. Ellie's not all in on Dina. If Ellie was all in on Dina, we're not here in Seattle. We're in Jackson, processing the grief of having lost Joel to unfortunate circumstances and processing that with a person who we love as much as she loves us. But instead, we've dragged her to Seattle, which she came willingly because she loves us. But our connection with Joel is more deep than Dina. And no more... It's no more apparent than the fact that we're here and in that conversation. Fascinating stuff. Love it. I love it. 
Ellie didn't ask Dina to make the sacrifice, but that doesn't mean that she that Dina gets elevated past Joel's status for doing it. In part because Ellie didn't ask for it. Dina can't hold the fact that she's here over Ellie's head. And I do think that Dina shows some pretty good restraint in, in making sure she doesn't say that. It comes out in passive ways, but I think it's pretty clear that Dina acknowledges that she is the one that made the decision to be here, and she understands that. She gets it. Hard to know, Peachy. It would be interesting if she did, though. Like, if if that was to happen, I think that would make for very interesting hey, content. If look. Dina reached a line. Who do you think it is? Uh, someone who wants us to feel her love. You think she's related to the wolves? I don't know. It's kind of fucking weird. Mm. It looks a little bit, um, culty. Yes, I would also say that it looks a little Nazi-like. I would agree, Shelbs. However, we might hypothesize that Dina seeing that, if she's as fully connected to her being Jewish as she indicated she was when we were in the synagogue, that might be enough to light a fire under her ass for these people. You never know. Viv, I hope this gets to you. I saw what happened. The WLF broke into your place and carried it all, carried out all the stuff Jimmy took. Jewelry, IDs, ration cards. He wouldn't answer their questions, just kept saying he didn't know where any of it came from. I tried to talk to him, explain how hard it's been, how Fedra forgot about us. We've all had to do things we're not proud of. They seemed to calm down, then they found a, serp a seraphite prayer in his pocket. We tried to stop them. So sorry, Raul and Heather. Wait. Feel her love. So that's the wonderful tension, Hecking, right? That connection is detrimental to one's own survival, but connection is surely required for anyone else to survive. Uh-huh. Which is why we see people form into these ideological groups. Connection in terms of survival connection, yes, but emotional connection... We don't have the luxury of that in a world like this. We may want it, but emotional connection leads to pain. It leads to dumb decisions. It leads to impulsiveness. Connection in the form of you and I are in this together and we can shoot stuff. That's fine. So what it really brings in to light here is the fact that humans have evolved to a point where we value emotional connection almost on the same plane as we do survival connection and proximal connection. But if you put a scenario like this, where there's just universal adversity, all of a sudden that has to get split again. Now, all of a sudden, emotional connection is a liability as opposed to just having strength in numbers. Holy shit. These are all shot. <laughs> Probably Tommy. Maybe Tommy. Uh-oh. Hey, look. Tommy's. In fact, it did a number on this one. <laughs> you okay? all right? Yeah, sorry. It's just the smell. Ugh. All right. I must have taken off on foot. You good to keep going? Yeah, I'm fine. 
please. You see that? You see that frustration? On the you good to keep going? That right there. Right there. Shows Joel is more important than Dina. <laughs> I'm frustrated because you're vomiting and a, vi and a liability to us continuing on. I I'm not I'm not drawing upon empathy. I'm not saying, okay, maybe we can stop and slow down. No, it's what are you fucking kidding me? You're gonna this is how we're this is what's going on now? You gonna make it? You okay? Ellie's convictions are strong and it shows up, right? When shit hits the fan, adversity with Dina. Adversity with Dina is at conflict with her convictions toward Joel. She's in, man. Ellie is all in on this. You can so often show your intentions through your tone to people. This city gets so wrecked. Boston was more like this, was it? Boston didn't have a full-blown civil war. Fireflies never put up this kind of resistance. That is true. I don't, I don't see any wolves. No. It's not counter chickens, though. <laughs> See the TV station? Yeah, it's that way. Uphill. Wonder if their convo about someone being injured as a burden is invalidating Ellie's concerns or check-ins in Dina's mind? Potentially. Whoa. More bodies. More shot bodies. <laughs> Tommy definitely came this way. I bet he went through there. Tommy brought all the ammo in the armory for this, apparently. Good lord. Although, so did we. Stop. Tripwire. Oh, shit. <laughs> Catch. <laughs> They're all over. Probably for infected. Still. One wrong step. Yeah. Let's be careful. This is why I'm loving your streams. You bring forward these concepts I haven't thought about and make me look at narratives in a whole new light. Well, I'm so glad I can provide that for you, Hecking. This provides a meaningful experience for you. I'm honored. Whether you're watching on YouTube or Twitch, if there are people you think could benefit from watching these playthroughs, send them my way. They've really got this area covered. Probably don't cut through here much with all this. There's that silver lining. This tall grass is making me nervous. Yeah, they're getting tricky to see. Ellie and Dina are constant, constant foils for each other. You'll notice that when one of them suggests that there's something to be worried about, the other reassures. I know I talked about this a little bit in the last stream, but... Dina expresses concern. Ellie says we're fine. Ellie expresses concern. Dina says we're fine. We can't have them both simultaneously freak out or else it completely stops this mission. We are, I know that's true. I shouldn't be worried about tripwires. Ellie can tank them nice and easy. We did learn that, didn't we? Feel her love. Man, I'm not liking this chick. Oh, that mannequin freaked me out. What's up, man? You don't look very happy to be here. Oh, workbench. Freaking clutch, man. Let's go. So 
somehow. All right, let's go. Hmm, capacity on this guy. Fire rate, stability, reload speed, damage. I like reload speed on this. Oh, sick. All right, hunting rifle. Give me that scope. Stability, scope. Scope me, baby. We are going to a TV station, yes. Oh, yeah. Love how we just found that. Stability. Or capacity. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let's go capacity. I love the way they did weapon crafting in this game. So good. Let's get out of here. Okay. Oh, that's where we just were. More of this stuff. Huh. How do I get through that? Do I got a brick on me? Oh, I do. All right. Dina. Oh, Jesus. All right, Dina, stand back. Or wait, maybe we can open this. Uh, potentially peachy. Although I would say that she's done an okay job inviting uh, Dina in. I don't know that she's really putting Dina at a distance so much as she's just showing her cards in the sense that, like, Dina's not more important than the mission. More tripwire. Man, that is... Uh... How do we get over this? I gotta chuck a bottle at this? Or, no, we're going under. There's a TV station. Right there. All right, looking good, but uh, here's the problem, uh, D. I don't really know. Oh, okay, we got a bottle here. I don't think we can get around this one. <clears throat> hmm. <laughs> Smart. That works. Yeah, yeah. it's also loud. I've seen Joel do this. You think someone heard that? It was pretty loud. Keep your eyes peeled. Oh. <laughs> Shit. Stay down there. These stairs are wired up. Can you detonate them? Not here. Oh, this is fun. This is good. Um, hmm. I'm going to run to the restroom really quick and think through how I'm going to get out of this pickle. Be right back, friends. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate you all.
Okay. Uh. Well. I mean, you would think that in reality, you could just literally walk right over this. God damn it. We're not being subtle right now. No, we're not. Maybe Leah will come to us. Yeah. Or they might be waiting to ambush us. Ugh. Need to get in there. There's always an alternative way. If video games have taught me anything. Come on over, Dina. There it is. Stay low. All right. It feels empty. I don't buy it. You see a way in? Not yet. It is awfully quiet. Just hoping there's no more tripwires either. Generator in there. Maybe we could climb up? Hey, some pallets! Hello, old friend. That jump. About to parkour our way up here. Maybe. Maybe not. Yikes. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's brutal. Tommy do this? Let's get inside. He sure did. I mean, Tommy's on a warpath, man. Brother's dead. This guy's got an arrow in it. This guy has an arrow in him. We're also really only kind of assuming that it's Tommy. I mean, I think we can reasonably expect that it is, but... I got a bad feeling about this. I don't need what's in there. Come on, Dina. Oy. Fuck. Be careful. Kind of nice of Tommy to lay a trail for us if it is him. Oh, what's up, Widgie? Thank you for bringing folks over here again. 
Those of you coming along with Widgie, this is a spoiler-free run of the of The Last of Us Part Two. You probably know that already, Widgie. I know you're gonna raid and run, but thank you so much for bringing folks over here again. We use the game to illustrate psychological concepts, so if that sounds fun to you, stay and hang out. Holy. This is definitely not Tommy. Oh, jeez. Who the fuck did this? I don't know. But it's a message. No kidding. This just happened. Keep your eyes open. Yeah, that's very obviously sending a message. I don't know how you could look at that as anything else. I don't want to cut them down. Oh my god, look at that. Why would you slash their stomachs open like that? I mean, they're not exactly doing well for themselves for making themselves sympathetic figures here, man. Like, I've been sitting here trying to empathize, but, like, I don't really know what justification you have for doing something like that other than trying to freak people out. But that then gets us back to the conversation, right? Like, there are probably people who joined the WLF who really didn't want to, but did so out of intense fear of what would happen if they didn't. And that's how you overrun people in a world like this, with, with power and shows of strength and force. Dina, I got you being directive. Boy, they're throwing a lot of ammo at us. just imply from now on that we're always going to be careful as if we weren't going to be careful unless we heard it from each other got messed up. But lucky me, there's a Kimamela card. After her family lost their house to greedy developers, young scientist Kimamela Green's public protest fell on deaf ears. Frustrated, she turned her research and animal behavior into a means of political action. Many late nights at the lab culminated in a device that allows her to telepathically communicate with animals. 
Now, as a member of the Society of Champions, Kimamela brings her animal allies to places around the world where civil strife and avarice threaten to force people from their homes. And when evildoers don't listen to her, she lets her animals do the talking. Alrighty. Cool. Well, glad we found that. That's We found everything except what we're looking for. like a radio or something rue a little bird told me those scars you brought in from the lost or from the coast talk i heard isaac is quite impressed with you i know you've been having doubts but you've got to power through right now show him what happened on the coast wasn't a one-off and you'll be set for life think about how few people get this chance i'm proud of you dad oh my god again this is how you survive the world like it's it just makes you ask the question is, is the, the world worth living in God damn. We're just gonna play it cool. Yeah, it's a radio. Got a, an old ham radio here. That's her. Leah. You sure? Yes. Guess the universe really wanted her dead, huh? There's nothing on her. It's near Jackson. Look at their fucking smiles. That's her. That's the one who killed him. Three down, right? Doki. She's dead. How do you feel? I'm pissed we couldn't talk to her. Yeah. But she didn't hurt Joel. It would have been pretty fucked up to make her talk. She traveled hundreds of miles to torture him. I don't care whether she held the club or not. I get it. Oh, you get it, but you don't Let's want to. Up. Look over Leah's stuff. For sure. Let's head deeper into downtown. We can find a building to secure. We're all kind of Dina right now, right? Like, man, Ellie, I get it, but like, Jesus. You're you're taking it to a next level. They went in and they killed Joel. They didn't kill you. They didn't kill Tommy. They didn't kill any of that, right? Like, they didn't they killed Joel. If we were going to go one-to-one, -one, it would be Ellie going and killing Abby, not everybody else. But. 
So we're not all Team Dina. I, I, I find myself being a little bit more with Dina here. Like, I get it, but also, like, Ellie... Oh boy. Get down. Oh, we can't get out of here. Shirna, thank you so much for the raid. Those of you coming along with Ashirna, hello, I'm Dr. Mick. I'm a licensed couple and family therapist. I have a PhD in human development. This is game sessions with a therapist where we play cool games and analyze them for the psychological concepts that are within them. This is The Last of Us 2. It's a spoiler-free run. I want to give you a heads up if you're coming along with Ashirna. If you haven't seen this before, this game is brutally violent. And... Uh, not for everyone so if you need to step away i totally understand or if you don't want the game spoiled i totally understand that as well i ask that you you know you take care of yourself and prioritize your own health rather than hanging through here but ashirna i appreciate you immensely friend thank you so much for bringing folks my way i hope you had a wonderful stream oh god we're in trouble quiet love thank you for the bits Oh shit. Oh. Well, I didn't have much of a choice there. There's a staircase behind us, so this is no good. Oh, Jesus. You, Dina. I will do no such thing. There you are. Wow, that woman just dodged two bullets. Three. Jeez. And he's still standing. I don't think so. I hear more. This way. Come on. All right, I'm down to get out of here. Where are we going, Dina? Where are we going? Go! Go, Dina, go! Let's get out of here! Go! Come on, Dina! Come on, Dina! Dina, we gotta run! Oh boy! What the hell are scars? Come on, baby! Come on, baby! Son of a bitch!
Holy shit, where do we go? There's like nowhere to go in here. I guess this isn't the time where we're gonna tell, we're gonna show uh, Dina that we're immune, huh? We gotta keep moving. Yep, we sure do. Yikes. There's a way through. They thought they had us. I know. Oh boy. Ellie. Turn your light off. Oh boy. So which is it? Are these guards or trespassers? Dina, Dina, get the other one. Dina. Oh, I really thought Dina was going to get this one. Oh, this is going to suck. Dina, kill it. Oh, shit. Come on, patch up, patch up. Come on, let the clickers attack him. Oh, Dina just firing away. Shot, Dina. Okay. We shouldn't hang out here for too long. Agreed. Grab what you can, and then let's move. As I hear more clickers. Woo! Yeah, let's go. Nice and quick. Quick sweep. Uh, DM me, Musa. On Discord. Yeah, let's get the hell out.
I don't like the red flare. A little intense. I'm still a little angry at Dina for not killing that other clicker. I really think we could have got through all this without anything if we could have done that. Dina. Come on. Close the door. Close the door. Are you okay? Yeah. Thanks. Babe. I'm really tired. Yeah, let's get out of here. Me too, Dina. This way's blocked. What is this? Jewels. Jules, I hope you made it out and find this. The two of us got into a minor dust-up with some clickers, but we're still in one piece. Hold up here for the night to lick our wounds. The long dead body of a man watched over us, a gruesome reminder of why we're doing this. This infection, it really was a warning. Better to live off the land than remain in this rotting mess. Zachary says if we keep heading north, we'll hit a Seraphite encampment in the next couple days. He calls it Haven, and they built it all themselves. Hearing him talk about it, it was hard not to get inspired, even optimistic. I pray for your safety. I hate to think of what Isaac will do if his goons catch you. I'll be holding my breath, waiting for a sign that you're okay. Gray. Maybe through here? Did you hear what they kept calling us? Scars. I wonder if that's who made all those murals and gutted all those wolves. Everyone in this city's a fucking psycho. No shit. More. The imp trading card. An impossibly fiendish sprite-like creature. Some say she was created in Dr. Uckman's laboratory. Others say she came from a parallel dimension. Whatever the case may be, people always underestimate her capability for mischief until it's way too late. She possesses the Shriek, a high-pitched vocal click capable of incapacitating an entire army, but capturing her is worth the risk confronting the new dogs her mysterious psychic connection with dr uckman means there's often the only one she's often the only one who knows where he is at a given moment yeah speaking of cults this is a world that is ripe for cult formation absolutely cults cults are basically founded on two things they're founded on people's need for connection and people's need for purpose and their vulnerability you can get pretty vulnerable people who have lost their way and don't quite know what their identity is in a given context to join a cult because you basically give all of that to them, for them, and you provide a sense of safety and reliability amidst that. You get people's costs sunk into it. You get them isolated from other people. This is a great environment to start a cult if you're charismatic enough. Good word, thank you for the raid, buddy. I really appreciate it. Welcome in. Jesus. Have you ever seen anything like this? Bloaters have acid spores. But that didn't sound like a bloater. Whatever the fuck they're fighting, we should let them kill each other. Agreed. 
This guy's like steaming. Where do we go? I guess I'll go this way. There's a ladder up there. I don't see... Oh, here we go. The clicker. My favorite kind. Mine too, Dina. Workbench. That's not super useful right now. I don't think I have enough materials for anything, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Some rope. Got another ladder across there. Okay. How do we get to it? Like this? That'll do. Come on. Here we go. It is indeed, Peachy. Ladder's broken. Damn it. Of course it is. Why wouldn't this be easy? Sure, this is where we're supposed to go. All right, so we got to figure out how to get. Oh, look at this vent. Which vent? Oh, good call, Dina. Good idea. Oh man, that would be so freaking terrifying to see something you haven't seen and it's infected related. Oh my God. And it basically explodes acid. And just when you think you've seen it all and now we got to drop down into the area that it's in, that's fun. Infected will not see your flashlight. Well, that's good to know. God. I don't even know. Oh my God. Runner, over there. I'm going to need your flashlight off, please. I don't know how to kill this thing. Look at this. Pretty sure I can't just sneak up on it. Oh, my God. 
God, that was close. I don't want to fight those guys if I can help it. Is this going to make too much noise? I sure hope not. Watch it! All right, I guess we're I guess we're doing this. assholes did they get you no i'm clean shamblers is that what they called them yeah where the hell do shamblers come from i don't fucking know but they're disgusting oh look like advanced bloaters this takes us <laughs> Yeah, I guess chucking a Molotov at them might have been a good decision, but... Take your time. Almost done. Okay. Kidoki. Let's get the hell out of here. As far as I can see. Good. Uh, shamblers? As if the others weren't bad enough. Man, guess that's nature for you. Yeah, well, nature's an asshole. That it is. I don't know that I want to linger in here too long. Locked. Means there's got to be some alternative way to get in there. And now I've been presented with a puzzle, so now... Hey. It was a, it was a tough puzzle, but we got there. Dr. Daniela Starr. Recruited by Spark Century 22 out of Titan's Best Science Academy, brilliant Daniela Starr was assigned to the Ion Engine development team. Under the watchful eye of her colleagues, she came up with plans that exceeded everyone's wildest expectations. But when she learned her superiors plan to use her technology for energy weapons, she scuttled her research and fled to Ganymede. Now, under the protection of the Future Alliance, she's on the verge of developing mankind's first faster-than-light vessel. Neat. I'll be glad I have all of these when all of this is over. Right? Shit. Needs a combination. Of course it does. Oh. And it can't just be one, two, three, four, five, can it? What's this? The code is 152 question mark question mark. Okay, enough hints. If you can't figure the rest out, I'm with the wrong man. Enjoy. 152 blank blank. Hey, Dewey, forget the code again. 
Get me a soda and the code is yours. Miraculous survival in suburb tonight abandoned. Lower Queen Anne. Military forces were surprised yesterday to discover a whole community alive and well. While the surrounding neighborhoods were entirely overrun with victims of the cordyceps infection that's been ravaging the nation, these survivors had managed to keep their secrets and homes clear all by themselves, or streets and homes clear all by themselves for the past six months. Found just days away from running out of food. It's a story worthy of calling a miracle. Huh. Hmm. If I was the last two numbers for Dewey... One, five, two, blank, blank. I guess that only leaves three and four, right? Let's see. Yes. Hell yeah. Magic. We got some stuff. I want to get out of here. No, oh, no. What is this? Yeesh. Hey, doesn't this look like the lady from the scar graffiti? Yeah. Why do you think the wolves call them scars? After the shit we saw today, I'm not sure I want to find out. Me either. Can we maybe avoid them? Dude, it's always the runners that are more dangerous. Humans with vision, man. Shotgun out, let's get it reloaded. We're just gonna go loud. Entry added. What do we add here? These are good drawings. How are their new infected? Well, you gotta believe that they would evolve maybe a little bit over the course of 20 years, especially if they haven't been touched in a long time. And I guess I can't say I'm entirely surprised that there would be a new variant. 
I mean, hell, look at COVID. COVID developed variants within a year. I mean, it stands to reason that these would... The cordyceps would also figure out a way to evolve in some way or have some sort of variant. Love to see that. What the hell happened here? I'm going to say some kind of troll. Thanks, Sherlock. You know, something I find interesting from a game design standpoint is Naughty Dog makes this ridiculously beautiful world. But it wouldn't make a lot of sense to waste a bunch of time exploring it if you're Ellie and uh, Dina. Like, Jesus. I, I wonder how long they kept these running past Outbreak Day. Like, granted, you would want to scavenge, but... Up we go, then. Exploring every nook and cranny is just because, like, I love that the game is so freaking gorgeous. Like, look at this. Dina? Yeah, coming. All right, Dina. I know you're tired, but come on. We can do this. Getting close to light. Hey. Let me get you up there. Yeah. What you got? Hold me up. Oh, that works too. Come on. Okay. Let's rally. We're almost out. Lead on. Come on, Dina. You can do it. Mind over matter. We're so close. My mask is cracked. Ellie, your mask. Here, we can share mine. No, 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 no! What? Don't take it off. Ellie, Ellie, stop! Ellie, stop! What? No! Ellie, no! Stop! I'm not infected. I'm immune. I'm not coughing. Do you see? Oh, fuck. Dina. Shit. We gotta go. Yeah. Yes. Let's fucking go. Go. I wasn't lying to you, Dina. Motherfucker! I'm coming! Right here! Don't slow down! Go, 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 go! Thank you! Thank you, Dina! Let's go! Fuck! Go right! Oh my god, let's go. Let's go. Keep it going. No! Oh, Jesus. Let's not stop and look at him.
Come on, Dina. Hey. What do you say we rest in that theater? <sighs> that sounds so fucking good. It really does. Although, that's very close to where all those infected just were. I got you. Here. Got it? You want to tell me what's going on with you? What's going on with me? Ellie, I just saw you breathe spores. I told you. I'm immune. Okay. You're immune? Come on. I was bitten a long time ago. The fuck are you talking about? I was bitten and nothing happened. The chemical burn. Maria and Tommy and Joel are the only ones who know. New. Now you know. I can't get you infected if that's what you worry about. I can't make you immune either. I'm pregnant. What? Don't worry, it's not yours. <laughs> what are we... St what are we supposed to do now? Nothing. I just need to rest for a are second. Are you fucking kidding me? How long have you known? It was late a few weeks ago. A few weeks? We could have... We could have still turned back. Well, I didn't know... I wasn't sure, okay? I didn't want to be a burden. Well, you're a burden now, aren't you? Make sure this place is secured. You just rest. Okie dokie. That makes things a little bit intense here. Was that nice of Ellie to say? Maybe not, but it's true. It's true.
And it's not a liability in the form of like, we have to make sure that we take care of three of us. It's a liability in the sense that being pregnant leads to things like Dina getting tired. And vomiting when she see th sees things. Like, she has now become a liability to Ellie. And again, I know that I've said this so many times in the stream today, but, like, Ellie is showing her hand over and over and over and over and over that Dina is not as important to her as Joel is. Now, she's mad at Dina... Not because they would have turned back. I actually don't know that Ellie would have turned back. I think she would have turned back, dropped Dina off, and left and came back. But Dina's talking about how she cares so much about Ellie. And, I, I mean, there's no way she would have known that she's pregnant, but... And taking a trip by horseback from Jackson, Wyoming to Seattle is going to take a long time. So it's it's... You know, obviously she got pregnant before they left, but she wouldn't have known that. There are people that go through an entire six months before they know they're pregnant. So, I mean, it's 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 not unrealistic to have this happen, but oh my God, does this complicate things? We can't just turn back. We're in this too deep. And I think what this shows Ellie in some ways is it reminds her that all of a sudden now, first of all, if this baby even gets to term for one, now they're out in the boonies. It's not like they're going to be out here for nine months, but there's no promises they're going to get all the way back. Dina's probably in danger because of the fact that she's pregnant, given the fact that we don't have modern medicine. It's also, a, I mean, it's a, it's a reminder that it's not going to be just Dina and Ellie. I assume, I'm assuming that the baby is probably Jesse's because that's who she was with before she was with Ellie. And we don't have any indication that she was with any other men before she was with Ellie. But, oh, man. Ellie being pissed off here makes sense. She's really far down the line. I mean, look at that anger. She's hurt. She's angry. If she feels any sense of responsibility for Dina's well-being, now that's in jeopardy. I think the other thing that I want to drive home with this is that I think this creates further, dis uh, further dissonance for Ellie. She cares about Dina a lot. And I, I think it would be hard for her to not care about the fact that Dean is pregnant and that there's a potential baby along the way. But what it does is it highlights that there are other things to live for outside of avenging Joel's death. That Joel's not the end-all be-all. That life goes on despite the fact that Joel is gone. And that's a very hard thing for a grieving person to acknowledge, but this makes it that much more tangible for her. All of a sudden, she kind of has a look on her face of like, what am I doing? And she's in, she's at odds with herself. I want to get this done. We're down the line, but I got other shit I care about now. And these worlds are colliding faster than I'd like them to. an intense experience for her to be having right now and not one that you're going to unpack immediately so uh we'll uh where we'll pick it up on the next one